rich physicists broke into the U.S. nuclear facilities. Nuclear facilities are impregnable secrets of fortresses, or so you might think. With World War II at its height and the Manhattan Project deep in progress, its home, the Los Alamos nuclear base, was one of the most defended places on U.S. mainland soil. Dr. Richard Feynman, RIP fellow Californian, I know he was from New York, but he is buried in California, regularly snuck into offices and stole secret documents. <laughs> Feynman was as much a maverick as anyone might be as a top physicist. While studying in MIT, his ability to break down topics in seminars that attracted the likes of Albert Einstein was matched by his laid-back attitude and penchant for playing the bongo drums. He also was a regular at a club where I worked, <laughs> but it was before I worked there, it was before I was born, but another professor actually came in and told me so. As the USA entered World War II, he, along with most physics graduates, were swiftly recruited into the Manhattan Project, the United States Atomic Bomb Project, and he worked on figuring out how powerful the bombs might actually be. It was here that he struck up a relationship with Niels Bohr. He wasn't afraid to point out holes in the respective physicist's idea. Feynman, however, soon grew bored working with the remote facility and began to entertain himself by breaking into his colleagues' filing cabinets to take reports he needed for his work when they weren't around. Security was soon informed and they installed better locks, which he also managed to crack. Feynman himself said, quote, I opened the safes, which contained all the secrets to the atomic bomb, the schedules for the production of plutonium, the purification procedures, how much material is needed, how the bomb works, how the neutrons are generated, what the design is, the dimensions of an entire information that was known at Los Alamos." End quote. <laughs> Feynman took a teaching post at the California Institute of Technology, aka Caltech, Go Beavers, in 1952. He became a relatively popular speaker and was asked to rework his lectures. Between 1961 and 1963, he gave the most famous series of the lessons ever known, the Feynman Lectures. Delivered with his trademark charisma and approachable style, the lectures were audio recorded and written up as a collection of books. He was a rock star. These remain among the best-selling physics books of all time and are essential reading for any physicist. I know someone who attended his lectures when he was alive, and at the start of his class, he had a bowling ball on a string hanging from the ceiling and he held it at his nose. It would swing across the room. The bowling ball would return, not touching his face because physics, and he'd say, welcome to class. Feynman's work was largely based around the interactions of subatomic particles. It was a tricky area that involved a lot of mathematics and complex ideas. Unhappy with how the problems were set out, Feynman developed the Feynman diagram, I have it here. The diagram allows for a simple representation of a particle interaction showing the incoming particles, how they interact, and what comes out the other end, including whether there are any antiparticles. Here are also some standard model Feynman diagrams. Sign up to my newsletter linked below so you can always stay updated and never miss a single post. It's gonna be linked below. Give this a like, subscribe and click the bell and I will see you later.